from Juliet Restaurant. My name is Josh, and I'm here with Seamus, Taylor, and Crystal with a C and no H. <laughs> Uh, and we're here for the second part okay? of our cooking demonstration. Earlier today, I was working brunch at the restaurant just a few blocks away uh, while my sous chef, Rachel, was here doing some preparations for us. And until a few minutes ago, I really didn't know what we were going to be having for lunch. But I think an idea is starting to come together. Do any of you have any allergies? No. Nope. You're sure? Well, see, you don't hide anything. You always, <laughs> always tell me. So we have one allergy to cat hair, but don't worry. We don't have any of that today. Um, but I think we're going to have some sandwiches. So you've been here volunteering all day for the telethon. Started at 10 o'clock this morning, and you have five hours left to go till 10 o'clock tonight. If you haven't yet, please make your donation at somervillemedia.org. Um, but we do need to get fed. So how about a grilled cheese? We have two cheeses here, a cheddar, also clamage, uh, which is a local cheese actually, made in Westport, um, Massachusetts. Well, actually made in, in South Deerfield. I think that's right. <laughs> With the dairy in Westport, uh, but they're neighbors. Um, uh, Barbara Hanley and, and her team uh, make that cheese. We can talk more about that later. It's a really great cheese. And it looks like we have an avocado puree um, and some sliced tomatoes, which I hope came from our friends at Metro Pedal Power, another Union Square company. Um, and we love, yeah, I think so. So they uh, they get us beautiful produce from a lot of local farms, Massachusetts, uh, up into Vermont a little bit. And they get us nearly year-round access to these wonderful greenhouse-grown tomatoes. Um, and if you don't know Metro Pad Pedal Power, you should definitely check them out. They're actually featured in the second issue of our magazine here of Juliet, which you can <laughs> buy at the restaurant or you can find online. Um, <laughs> but we can talk more about them also later. And it looks like we have some mayonnaise. Uh, so one of the things that you might not have ever thought of about grilled cheese before, um, you make grilled cheese, right? Oh, yeah. So the first thing you want to do is heat up your bread dry. Nothing here on the bread. We're preheating the bread and it's going to help the cheese melt when it comes time to make the sandwiches. <laughs> this is a little bit of a makeshift kitchen here. We had to cart it all over and we just have the one electric burner. But if you're at home, you could put the bread in the toaster. You could put it in the oven. Don't forget about it in there just for a couple of minutes. And that's going to make things uh, much quicker for us when it comes time to get that cheese melted before the bread burns, which is the tough part of a grilled cheese. So I have this simple mayonnaise here. Uh, and what Rachel doesn't know is that uh, I was counting spices at the restaurant today. So I have a pocket full of saffron, actually. And <laughs> our saffron has a kind of a cool story. Um, have you ever had saffron? Yes. Go ahead and smell this. You can pass it around. Um, it's $100 an ounce. Wow. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's actually, uh, it, it comes from a flower. Wow. Uh, and they have to pick the little threads out of the, the center of the flower. And this saffron is actually grown in Afghanistan. Um, and we get it through direct trade uh, with the farmers that grow the saffron on repurposed opium fields, actually. Uh, mm -hmm. So it's a pretty cool um, initiative by another Boston company based in Chicago now, but they got their start in Boston called Rumi Spice. Really great folks. So what we've done here is just squeeze a lemon um, and we're going to add a small pinch of saffron to the lemon. A little bit goes a very long way. And the saffron is going to quickly steep and spread that flavor out through the liquid and that's going to really flavor our mayonnaise. You see, $100 an ounce, but we've used... I would say how many dollars is that? That, you know, honestly, it's probably not even, it's, it's not much. So it, it, it's scary to go out and buy, um, but then you use it so sparingly that it lasts a long time. It, it doesn't last forever on the shelf though, So, but if you flavor some sugar with it, flavor some lemon with it, or somehow extract the flavor, then you have it forever. So that's what we're doing here today. And you can see the color changing already. What kind of flavor? Well, what do you think after smelling it? I don't know, I feel like it's like a light spice. It's hard, it's hard yeah, to describe. It's hard to describe. Like sourdough. That's really mm -hmm. interesting. Ooh, yeah, that's interesting. So give it another smell. I think this particular saffron smells like dark, dried, uh, sour cherries, which is interesting when you yeah, say sourdough. Like, um, like uh, craisins. Yeah, <laughs> craisins. well, exactly, <laughs> yep. So that, that's, uh, and different people smell different things. Yeah, you can smell that now. Yeah, so. you can smell it now. And you see this mayonnaise that Rachel made earlier, the whole color has gone orange from that lemon and that saffron. This is really interesting. So that's going to add uh, another element to our sandwich here that you have some friends over after work or school or whatever you're doing in the afternoon and they're just going to be surprised by this which is fun. Everyone's had a grilled cheese before but most people you know probably haven't had one filled with saffron. So that bread is uh, just about warm. Um, do you guys have any questions about what you've seen so far? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So about this uh, cheese, the clamage, which is the soft one, looks kind of like um, ricotta cheese. This is 
like I said, made locally. And we have a dish at the restaurant called Captain Leo's Breakfast um, that features this cheese. So Captain Leo um, was a, an airplane captain um, in the military and then a commercial airline pilot. And him and his wife, Barbara, uh, bought and kind of revitalized the Shy Brothers Dairy, which is in Westport, uh, where the cheese is produced. And Captain Leo actually died recently, but he was a great supporter and a great friend to the restaurant. Um, and we, his memory lives on there in our menus every breakfast, every lunch, every brunch uh, in Captain Leo's breakfast, which is a thick cut toast with his cheese, sliced tomatoes, and it's actually a memory of a breakfast that Leo and his wife Barbara made us, Katrina and, and me, around their farmhouse table. We woke up in the morning and scrambling and boiling eggs and picking tomatoes out of the garden. Uh, and that's where Captain Leo's breakfast comes from. Actually, you have a question. What else is in the mayo? So mayo um, must be so complicated, right? Those jars on the store, it's a big mystery. Mm -hmm. It's actually um, just a couple of ingredients, egg yolks and oil. In this case, uh, it tastes like Rachel's added a bit of lemon, um, and sometimes you find some garlic. And if you, a garlic-based mayo um, is that traditional French dish that you see on the fancy menus called aioli. Uh, yeah, so that, that's just mayo, really. So aioli means literally garlic and oil. So we kinda, they pound together in like a mortar and pestle traditionally. Uh, the egg yolks with the garlic, some salt, and then very, very slowly uh, emulsify uh, the oil into the resulting sauce. And to emulsify just means that it thickens and doesn't become this kind of oily, greasy mess, but the two together create this uh, thickened sauce. So now you can make mayo at home. Well, yeah. now, now you do. Um, I thought it probably had like a lot of chemicals. <laughs> right. Well, so that's the other thing. The one that you buy in the store very well may, and the one that you make at home, you can make it with just two ingredients. So if you're conscious about things like that, I definitely recommend making your own, which just takes a couple of minutes. Uh, and it's great work that you can do all by yourself, and it's, and it's fun to see the two things come together and, and feel like you've accomplished something in the kitchen that you know most people probably haven't attempted. So now with the, um, we're gonna make a, a two cheese grilled cheese. And with our preheated bread, this should melt um, rather quickly. And I'm actually going to use these sliced tomatoes. I'm gonna put them right in here with the sandwiches also so they get nice and warm. And then we'll open them up after they're cooked, and I think we'll spread that avocado in there uh, as well. Unless anybody prefers no avocado. I didn't think yeah. so. <laughs> I love tomatoes. I love everything about this. Yeah. <laughs> I had avocado too. <laughs> 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 Did you have any other ideas? I don't know. <laughs> Maybe you've heard some rumors of tomato jam. Yeah, I heard. <laughs> so it's a <laughs> jam. Yeah, we were a little <laughs> limited in the ingredients that we had on hand for the telethon today, but one of our favorite things to make at the restaurant, and certainly Rachel's favorite thing to eat, and I heard on my way in, she was telling everybody about the tomato jam. Uh, she eats it by the spoonful, um, and it's, it's a really simple jam made from tomatoes. Yeah, jam from tomatoes. Not strawberries, not blueberries, uh, but the savory fruit, um, and we add some preserved lemon, which is a lemon that's been softened uh, with salt and sugar, and we actually eat just the rind. So we discard the salty pulp that results, and these lemons are preserved for, for all time until we eat them. Uh, we thin slice the rinds, and we add a little bit of sugar uh, and some dill, actually. So it's a really interesting um, oh, cool. savory flavors with the sugar there and not exactly what you'd expect. And you know, now that I think about it, that would probably be great in one of these sandwiches, too. So maybe That's for next amazing. time, we'll yeah. make the jam, <laughs> which is totally something that you can do at home as well. So you'll have to get that from us. Um, we serve it at the restaurant every day um, with cheese. So if you come for dinner uh, and you want some cheese after dinner or before dinner, you have the jam with that. Um, and we were thinking that we might try to sell it at the farmer's market. But you know, one of my cooks, Noah, uh, has been on my case every day. When are we going to sell the tomato jam at the farmer's market? So maybe if you join Team Noah, you get on my case too. You might be able to buy it there like soon. <laughs> Everybody likes Noah. Yeah, every, every time someone comes into the restaurant, I ask, hey, do you, have you known these folks for a long time? He said, no, I just met them today. And they leave like they're best friends. <laughs> so you should totally come meet Noah too. You see how nice and golden brown we're getting this bread over here? How um, long do you like, leave it on each side? 
You know, you have to play it by ear a little bit. Do you smell the change in the environment? So we're starting to smell um, those, smell the things that, we're smelling things that make you want to eat, right? And that means we're getting yeah. close to having food that's done. But you have to be careful because on the other side of smelling things that we want to eat is smelling things that are burnt. So you have to, you know, rotate the pan a little bit, uh, but you don't want to get too anxious about it and pull it off too early because the whole fun of the grilled cheese yeah. is those uh, toasty flavors. And this might be hard to see, but if you get a, you can kind of see where the bread um, has the holes and the cheese is, oh, you know, yeah. totally oh, melty. Wow. And what, it's been on the, the stove here for two minutes. Yeah. You know, and that's why we preheat the bread ahead of time. Awesome. I know we have a whole crew outside too, so I'm going to make another round of these and then I'll give you folks a chance to taste it. What's one thing that the audience should know about um, grilled cheese? Well, we, we already covered preheat the bread, so you kind of took the took my thunder away. That would have been my, my real <laughs> ringer of an answer, um, so I'll have to get a little bit um, more creative. Uh, oh, so the other thing would be to butter not just the pan, but the bread itself. And I like to add a little bit of mayo. Um, if you're having mayo in the sandwich anyway, mm -hmm. I mayo both sides, and that actually helps with the browning too. Mm. So there you go. Two tips. Anyone can do this, essentially. I think so. So for everyone watching, they know they can do this at home. <laughs> yeah, and you know, I think we'll actually we'll include the recipe um, in the newsletter this coming week. It goes out on Thursday for Union Square Main Streets, um, and they run the farmer's market right here in the parking lot behind the studio. And every week, Juliet contributes a recipe um, to their newsletter. And you know, since we're cooking here for you on TV today, if you do like what you've seen, uh, we'll include the recipe next week for uh, both the tomato jam and a couple tips about making a grilled cheese. So thank you for the reminder. That'll be good for the folks watching at home. So as promised, we're just going to lift the lid here on the sandwiches and we're going to spread the avocado um, on the inside. I actually like having the, the change in the temperatures on the way through. So it's just kind of a, one of those interesting elements. Uh, some things hot, sometimes some things cool. The crispy outer of the sandwich with the soft um, condiments on the inside. I don't think I've ever opened a grilled cheese Me before. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, I, I feel like this is like, yeah, this is illegal. Like well, so that's, open it. so that's great. Let me say, I made some of these without tomato and some with tomato because we're going to share with everybody. And I know I asked you three, but we didn't ask everyone. Um, <laughs> we want to be nice. So it's OK to play around, to experiment with your food. You don't know what happens until you try. So oh, I wasn't supposed to open the sandwich because I already yeah. put it together. Says who? <laughs> open it up, see what happened, and you learn something on the way down. I'm glad you enjoy it. And now, you know, you can make this and all of its components, except, of course, for Captain Leo's favorite cheese. That you'll have to get from him. <laughs> but you can make the rest for yourself at home. That's really wow. good. Definitely yeah. take some mayo. Yeah. <laughs> Great. Okay, and do you taste the saffron now? Yeah. It is, it's a unique flavor. And it, even now, tasting it, I think it'll be hard for you to describe. It's hard for me to describe after yeah. years and years of eating it. Uh, but yeah. it's there, and it's unique, and it just brings something special. So you can really impress your friends with that, too. Mm -hmm. So as a reminder, we're here at Somerville Media Center on SCAT TV uh, with this 12-hour long first annual Speak Out Telethon mm -hmm. uh, to wrap up Pride Weekend here in Boston, too. I don't know if these balloons are on purpose, but I think they're a very fitting mm -hmm. backdrop to the day. Uh, and if you haven't yet, please go to the website, somervillemedia.org, where you'll find a link to make your donation to make all these programs that happen here at the Media Center possible. I'm actually a member myself of Somerville Media Center. Wonderful programming for youth, teenagers, adults, first-timers in media, yeah. people that want to share their skills who have been around it for a bit. And I just a yeah, it's yeah. the oldest community media center in the state, mm -hmm. uh, if I remember correctly, and one of the yeah. biggest <laughs> that I've ever uh, been a part of. So mm -hmm. really, really fun here. Come down and check it out. Join, um, or just uh, you know, make that small or large donation today to help make these things possible. Yeah, awesome. Thank you very much, awesome. folks. It was a Thank pleasure so cooking much. for you. Thank you. <laughs>